JPI EDM 900 installation video. This video will give you an overview of a typical JPI installation process. We're working with an EDM 900, but much of the information applies to any JPI EDM installation. Please note, you have a 30-day return policy on your new JPI. JPI will replace defective parts under warranty, but does not cover labor. It's important you get a good understanding of the process involved before jumping in. Let's start with the box, sorting out various pieces and harnesses. Everything is well marked to take you through the process step by step. Your EDM will include installation paperwork and a checkout test report. Each step has a clear page on the instructions to refer to, often with diagrams. Take a little time and get familiar with that before you start. Adjusting the display orientation. After installing the EDM 900 indicator and wiring harness to power, the indicator can be used on and off to check connections as you do your installation. You can change from portrait mode or landscape or back again by holding the step button for approximately five seconds. When you see the large arrow, push the lean find button to position the display the way you want it. Tap step to save and the JPI will reboot with a new orientation. EGT wiring and install. The most common installation problems are related to poor quality terminations. When cutting the pair of leads to the proper length to connect the probes, leave enough slack in the wiring so the probe may be interchanged to an adjacent cylinder if necessary for troubleshooting. The temperature probe must be wired to the correct polarity. Light colors always together. Terminate each wire with a crimp on ring terminal provided. Fold back the wire double before crimping terminals. Verify the quality of each crimp with a sharp tug on the wire. The terminal should be impossible to pull off when crimped correctly. Connect the wire ring lug to the probe ring lug using the supplied number four screws and nuts, placing the star washer between the ring lugs, not against the nut. Slide the sleeve over the joint and secure with three tie wraps. One thing to keep in mind is using proper tools when you install your JPI, especially crimping tools. Poor terminal connections are a common problem. When using the Metropack three wire connectors, make sure the wires are correctly positioned as you push them through the back of the connector and double check before crimping. Once they're pushed in and clicked, you can't push them back out or you'll need another connector if you do it wrong. Always push wires from the cabin through the firewall to the engine side and try to use existing rubber grommets if you can or existing service holes in the firewall. When you're finished, use flame retarding silicone to fill up any gaps. Route the wires first from where the EDM indicator will be placed on the panel. Try to follow existing wire routing, leaving room for a service loop. With your wire routing, avoid touching any metal to avoid chafing, especially on the engine side, as the high temperature wiring for the CHTs and the EGTs will fail if, if they get chafed. Always keep your wire routing clear of the hot spots. Our EGT probe will fit any engine. If no hole exists, it will require the drilling of a 1 8 diameter hole and ream to fit. A nominal distance of 2 to 4 inches from the exhaust flange is recommended. Insert the probe into the exhaust or previously drilled hole so the tip of the probe is in the center of the exhaust stream. Tighten the stainless steel clamp to a torque of 45 inch pounds and cut off the excess to close the screw. Sender and probe placement. 
With any senders like manifold pressure, fuel pressure, oil pressure, place the senders near or against the firewall. Leave enough wire to leave a clear route back through the firewall. Thermocouple and harness wire lengths are not critical for the JPI. Leave enough extra for troubleshooting and at the end of the installation you can pull any additional wire back through the uh, firewall into the cabin side and tie it off. With the RPM installation, use the J3 connector harness and connect the three leads using the supplied three pin connector end pins. There are four types of magnetos commonly in use. Check the diagram to match yours. Shrink wrap, which would go onto the wires first before you add any connectors. Follow the wire instructions exactly using the proper crimping tools and crimping technique. Remember to ground the instrument to the engine, not the avionics ground. This is critical and can also create problems and waste time troubleshooting. Fuel flow. The fuel flow sender must be installed using the supplied connectors and fire jacket. Every fuel flow sender is a little bit different, so write down the K factor written on the side of your unit carefully because once it's all covered up, it's going to be hard to get to. Never use Teflon tape anywhere near fuel lines. Only use the supplied steel fittings for the fuel flow. Be careful and note the fuel direction and mount the wires pointing up to go into your routing harness. After pressure testing, add the fire sleeve per instructions. Fuel tank calibration. Determine what your fuel sender wiring type is and if you're using auxiliary tanks. Remember to check if you have more than one float sender per tank and leave that harness in place. Refer to your aircraft wiring diagram if necessary to make sure you understand where the senders are on your fuel tanks. The JPI harness bypasses the original harness and will replace all the original fuel gauges. After the wiring is finished and connected to the EDM, you must hand fuel the aircraft to calibrate the tanks properly. Do this carefully and in a safe, well-vented location. Follow the instructions exactly, putting in known quantities of fuel, starting with unusable fuel in the tanks. Cycle the JPI to write down the correct number and add it to a table that you make. You're going to program that table into the EDM and then the fuel information will be precise for that particular aircraft. To start the pilot program procedure, simultaneously hold the Step and Lean Find buttons for 5 seconds. You will see the word Program for 2 seconds and then follow the sequence. Tap the Step button to advance to the next item in the list. Hold the Step button to step back to the previous button. Let's tap down to OAT and now we'll calibrate the OAT if it's reading high or low. To calibrate the OAT plus or minus 10 degrees, hold both step and lean find buttons simultaneously for 5 seconds, then proceed to the next step, otherwise the next step will be skipped. And this is a typical methodology when you're doing program changes. Some things have to be done in the air. Now we're going to adjust the horsepower constant for rich of peak operation. To fine-tune the percentage horsepower readout, follow this procedure airborne between 5,000 and 8,000 feet MSL. Enter the pilot program mode by simultaneously holding the Step and Lean Find button for 5 seconds. Tap Step repeatedly until you see Horsepower Constant. Hold both Next and Button 2 until you see the plus and minus appear in the status bar. Now the HP Constant 120 should appear. Set the manifold and RPM to per your POH to 70% power. Let conditions stabilize. Adjust the HP constant value plus or minus until the percentage horsepower reading on the display equals 70% horsepower. This is the percent of maximum horsepower.
You can view the full scan with all the information included in the scan or separately view the GPS fuel pages or the temperature EGT CHT pages. At any time you can step through the pages and hold them using the step button. Once in cruise and stabilized, use lean fine mode to save fuel and operate your engine with precision. Simply press the lean fine button and slowly lean the mixture. In this lean of peak example, the EGT display reverses to the icicle view to show the cylinders running lean of peak. Fine tune your engine with using the mixture control to where you want it. Press step to exit and the EDM will automatically return to the scan. The EDM 900 incorporates a single light that alerts the pilot if a problem exists within the engine. This light is placed with the primary flight instruments and required only if the display is more than 8 inches from the center of the instrument T. It is a single light that changes color and condition and must be lit by a post light or such that you can read the word engine. <laughs>